In this video, I'll show you how easy it was to get my SM7B connected to the Rodecaster Pro. I'm also opening a box. I'm not going to read you with the specs or anything like that, and I'll only show you a couple of features that caught my eye. Spoiler alert, there's no stickers. But if you don't want to see the excitement of a box being opened, feel free to skip to the next chapter, just down here where I've got some timestamps, where I share my first impressions. I have other timestamps down below as well to help you navigate the content. I did have a small issue, almost catastrophic in fact. So stick around to laugh at me, but also to be aware of what could happen to you. Last year I got hit in the face by this boom arm, the PSA one from Rode. This won't be as bad as that, but it will be something to watch out for anyway. I've been really looking forward to this. This has been in my saved items on Amazon forever. And also with the latest uh, beta firmware that is public now, the 2.1.2, this allows now for MIDI control, which means you can control your DAW software like uh, Logic Pro or Audition or Cubase or something like that, but also scene control in OBS. And that's really powerful, especially if you're doing lots of streaming. All right, let's open it. Nice. The box is very nicely put together, all the features in here, you know, record to micro SD card. Don't underestimate the power of this. This basically means you can take this without a computer anywhere and record a podcast episode. You can go down to the pub and record an episode. Imagine that without a computer. Really cool. Let's not go on too much about the box, hey? Cool. Taking the sleeve out, you're presented with the box itself and it's got a nice visual of the Rodecaster Pro. Okay, got your power lead here, USB-C to USB-A, and that cable is what you're gonna use to upgrade your firmware. So we're gonna do that. Some cool labels so that you can remember what effects you're using here, really useful. And a different way of labeling your, your effects pads here. Also in the box, you get a nice picture of the Rodecaster Pro in case you forget what it looks like. Some instructions, really like a bit of cardboard really for that. Seems a little bit overkill on the on the paper here, but it's nice. Very nice. Yeah, it's like a very strong cheat sheet, if you know what I mean. For me, it's gonna go back in the box and probably never seen again. All right, let's get to the good stuff. A nice weight to it, rubberized feet, quite big as well, so they're not gonna be sliding around, which is good. It's a warning here about high volumes on the headphones, so uh, make sure you activate the headphone limiting, no problem, we'll do that. The faders feel really nice, nice and sturdy. There's a little bit of movement on side to side here, but it feels quite professional, quite smooth. I've started a few podcasts in the last year, so this will be really handy for that. Also, live streaming is something that I want to do more of, and I can't wait to use this. Some of you may know I use the Shure SM7B, this guy here. So plugging that to the Rodecaster is something that I really am looking forward to as well. I don't have a FET head or a, a Dynamite or cloud lifter or anything like that. So I want to try plugging my SM7B directly to the Rodecaster. See how that sounds. Lots of people have recommended that I do use um, uh, kind of something to add more gain to it. It is a gain hungry microphone, like any dynamic microphone. But we'll see how we get on for now and, and try a few things later. For a nice way to secure the power. Cool, let's power it up and set it up. The first thing it asks you is to format the SD card, which is doing it. Really nice and responsive screen so far as well. First impressions, really good on that. Now we need to go and download the, the firmware and that's done. The whole firmware upgrade process took about 20 seconds once I double clicked on the install file. It does say beta now here, which they don't recommend you use for critical projects. YouTube, is that a critical project for me? It is, but I trust Rode. They're not gonna mess it up. One of the cool features that I'm looking forward to test here is the profanity swear button. <laughs> so you can configure this so that you can replace your swear words live with something funny or something rather than just a beep. The other cool thing that this firmware update gives you is you can mute all guests while you hold this button. So you can you can hold the button, mute everybody whilst you can talk. It's called the trash talk option. And there's some other fun features for the sound pads, which I'm really looking forward to testing too. Okay. So right now I'm using my SM7B, as I said, connected to my Scarlett 4i4. I'm going to replace the 4i4 with the Rode and see what it sounds like. So right now, this is what it sounds like on the SM7B connected to the Focusrite Scarlett 4i4 connected to my computer. And this is what it sounds like with the SM7B connected directly to the Rodecaster Pro at around, I don't know, 70% volume here. Let's see what it sounds like. and. I'm going to increase as well because I'm not sure if the volume will be too low. But let's increase a little bit on the input all the way to the top and see if it makes. It's not clipping from what I can tell, 
it should make a difference. Um, but usually what happens is I take that recording to audition and I have to add, add approximately 20 decibels of gain, usually when I record through the focus, right? One thing that I am looking forward to with the roadcaster is that you can apply effects going into the recording. So, so hopefully I won't have to do as much as I do today in audition, which is great. It will save me time. It will be quicker on my workflow and I can really start using this for every recording that I do. That's not meant to happen. I'm not sure if you guys listened to, to what was going on here. I'm pretty sure you did because I do have a backup microphone. Basically, I was trying to connect the micro SD card into the Roadcaster Pro. And I don't know, this lot is a bit bigger than the card itself. So it's the first time I'm using, so I'm not too sure of what I was doing here. But just watch out for that, guys. If, you, if you're getting this for the first time, make sure that when you're inserting it, it's going straight into this lot because there is a, a gap in there. So yeah. I nearly lost the micro SD card. Moment of panic there. This is now recording my SM7B directly into the Roadcaster. I am adding pretty much all of the gain that I can here on, on the board itself. Um, but from what I can hear, it seems okay. We'll see how, how it sounds like on the recording. As you could probably tell, I needed to dial down some of the audio processing settings that comes built into the Roadcaster Pro. And weirdly enough for me, they were all on. My recommendation, if you're trying this for the first time, is to turn all of these settings off and then slowly turn them on and, and use the processing that you need, depending on your voice and the message that you're trying to convey. For my voice, which is fairly soft and quiet, I was cutting out quite a bit. So I removed the noise gate and the oral exciter, for example, but I'm still experimenting. Quick reminder, guys, if you are enjoying this video, please hit that thumbs up, it really helps the channel. I won't waste any more of your time. As I was saying, I removed some of the audio processing to suit my voice. And that's the same when it comes to my SM7B itself. I'm also still learning the different frequency shaping switches, for example, and seeing what works for me. Right now, the bass roll off is turned off to a flat response, and the presence booster mid-range enhance is also turned off to a flat response. Two very important things before you go. First one is, I'm now gonna try the new features of the new firmware just released in 2021, including the profanity settings, AKA the swear button. But that will be on this video right here. I will also be enabling MIDI control to use my Roadcaster Pro to control my DAW software, such as Logic Pro and Adobe Audition. And I'll see you over there in one of these videos. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell, hashtag bell gang in the comments. See you soon, bye.